This is a talk based on essentially these three papers, two of them together with uh, Davide Masoero and Daniele Valeri, and the last one just with uh, Davide. And so <coughs> uh, this is a good opportunity to thank the organizers and in particular Davide for the uninterested invitation. <laughs> uh, and it is a talk about the ODEIM correspondence. Uh, so, quite vaguely, uh, ODEIM is, is a remarkable relation between uh, ODEs, so linear ordinary differential equations uh, in, in the complex plane, and for the models we will consider uh, more precisely, rather than ODEs, there are going to be OPERS. Uh, and I will define this, this OPERS, uh, of course, later. And this is the ODE side. And on the integrable model side, you have quantum integrable models. And what I'm thinking about is uh, quantum uh, KDV, quantum drift and Sokolov, essentially. So there is a bunch of these of this, uh, uh, correspondences and uh, they depend, uh, they are labeled if you want by uh, affine Katsumori algebras. And so in this talk I will consider a rather simpler situation. So I will take G to be a simple lace simply algebra over C, rank N, uh, and G hat, which is in the title, uh, is untwisted affine Katsumori algebra. So take the loop algebra, center extension, and I will need the whole Katsumori uh, algebra, so also with uh, this uh, scaling element here. Uh, mm, with this choice, uh, okay, later on I will need to consider the Langlands dual of G hat, and uh, with this choice, uh, I mean, this, this algebras are self-dual, so and every time later you will see L of G hat would be just uh, G hat. Typically, uh, uh, I mean, generically, if, if uh, uh, G is not simply laced, then L of G is going to be a twisted Katsumori algebra, and uh, uh, the construction works, but it's more complicated. So in this talk, I will just consider this uh, uh, more elementary uh, situation. Uh, OK, and I have to say, Okay, first a few words about uh, the integrable model side. So quantum G drip and Sokolov. I will be sketchy on this because I will work more on the ODE side. So I will just need a couple of things. So what is quantum GKDV? Uh, um, essentially the quantization of the second Poisson bracket of, of uh, the drip and Sokolov. And these are also known as uh, W algebras. And, okay, there's been some work by Fagin and Franklin in the 90s uh, showing that, the, I mean, proving the existence of a quantization for drink per circle of, and, um, and, and that this quantization was precisely the, the zamologic of the W algebras. But what I will need now are a couple of papers. Uh, by Bajanov, Lukem, and Zomologic of regarding the SL2 case, and Bajanov, Hibbert, and Kuroshkin in SL3, where they, there was a more concrete construction of this, of this uh, um, quantum models. And, uh, and the construction goes as, as, as follows. You fix a highest rate representation of this uh, W algebra. So in the case of SL2, the W algebra is just a, the, the Virasoro algebra. And this highest rate representation depends on a couple of parameters. One is P, which is, okay, H is a Cartan subalgebra of G, and it's called vacuum parameter. The rank of G is N, so P counts for N parameters. Then you have also C, which is the Virasova central charge, uh, which is one more parameter. And and then the, 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 the model is integrable, so you have the spectral parameter. So uh, in total, you have n plus two parameters. And I, I will find again this number later uh, talking about OPEX. 
Um, okay, what I need here are these uh, Q operators. So the integrable structure of this quantum GKDV is encoded, uh, maybe encoded in these uh, Q operators. These are actually operated by the functions. So they depend. One, once you fix lambda, these are operators for uh, VPC and the VPC, and they are expected to be entire functions in, in, in lambda. They encode quantum integral of motions, which means that you expand in lambda, you will find that this quantum integral of motions, whose uh, symbols are going to be the, the, the classical integral of motion of, 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 of KDV. And not just one operator, there is a, a bunch of operators. Uh, and uh, the number of these Q operators is uh, the cardinality of the value group of G. So for S2, you have two of them, which are typically denoted Q plus and Q minus. For SL3, you have six, and so forth and so on. And what is interesting, what is important for us, is that these Q operators, which, uh, uh, well, they, they, they satisfy some algebraic identities, which mm, essentially follows from uh, uh, embedding W in, in a fine quantum group. Uh, OK, so since the, 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 the operators Q are operated by the functions, if you fix an eigenvector, I mean a state of the, of the, uh, of the model, the corresponding eigenvalue will depend on lambda, and of course on, on, on P and C. And uh, since Q, the operator is just expected to be entire in lambda, also the eigenvalue is going to be an entire function of, uh, of lambda. This is the, 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 the idea. Uh, and from the algebraic relations among the Q operators, uh, there will be some functional relations uh, which will be satisfied by this eigenvalues for, for each state of, of the theory. And these functional relations are known in the SL2 case as quantum Bronskian. Later you will see, we will call them a QQ system, QQ tilde system. And from these functional relations, you get the to the beta and such equations. So this is all I had to say about this quantum KDV. In particular, I have not shown uh, equations because I will, uh, uh, the point of the ODEIM correspondence is that uh, you can find this the, the beta sets, but also these relations by considering uh, uh, certain opers. And, and so I will, I will show them from the opers side. Uh, this is the, the story. So more precisely, what is the ODEIM correspondence at least for these uh, models? Okay, you fix a state of quantum GKDV, and, uh, and for each state, there corresponds a unique L of G upper, I will call it L, Z and lambda, such that the generalized monotomy data of L coincide with the Q lambda function of the given state. So you have a state of GKDV, and you have a corresponding eigenvalue, which is Q of lambda, and you can obtain this Q of lambda by looking to, uh, at the uh, LG upper, which is this L, and to study the, the, the monotomy of this upper. Uh, okay, a few examples. Uh, I have to fix the algebra, which is SL2, and a state, the ground state. And in this case, and this is the original ODEIM correspondence, the corresponding upper will be a, share, a certain sharding operator, which you will see later. And uh, this, is, this is the original, the original uh, construction by Dorico Teo and Bajana, Vulcano, and Zamalogica. Then, instead, if you, if you fix SL2 again, but ra uh, rather the ground state, you consider higher states, then you'll get uh, the Schrodinger operator with the monster potential that uh, Claire Dunning was talking about yesterday. And this was done again by Bajana, Vulcano, and Zamalogica. And for SLN plus one and, and the ground state, there are a, a few works. I mean, I would say just this one, but a few works by these this people, so Dorin Dunning, Masuero, Suzuki, and, and Tateo. And the corresponding uh, opera is uh, an N plus one linear 
uh, and plus an orden linear uh, equation. Okay, so far so good. The algebraic breakthrough came with uh, Fagin and Frankel, uh, and, and what they said, okay, uh, SL2 is a Langland self-dual, and what Fagin and Frankel said, okay, they recognized that uh, uh, this ODIM uh, might be seen as, as a particular case of geometric Langlands. Uh, and so they said, okay, if you want to consider, you should consider on the ODE side, uh, LG operas. Uh, so operas uh, rather than just linear uh, or equations, and with the, but more important uh, with the values in the, in the, in the Langlands do well. Uh, and and this, this, is, this is correct, this is true. Uh, so I have to tell you what are these operas. Uh, okay, we'll consider meromorphic operas on, on P1, on CP1. And okay, this is quite standard, just uh, very standard actually. Uh, G again is simple the algebra, rank N, you have this triangular decomposition, H is the Cartan subalgebra, uh, fix the Borel subalgebra in this way, Chevalier generators. And I will need this one, the sum of the negative Chevalier generators, which is an important element, which is known as principal important element. And operas. These operas were introduced by Drimp and Sokolov. And then a more dramatic definition was given by Bayes and Drimfeld. And uh, actually, they can be defined on arbitrary Riemann surfaces. But uh, if you fix sigma to be just P1, which is the case I'm interested in here, they can be written in this way. OK, these are just operators, our first order operators, differential operators in DZ. Then you have this F, which is the principal nilpotent. And then an arbitrary function, which is a meromorphic function on P1, so a rational functions, with values in the Borel subalgebra. And I can introduce this gauge group, which is defined in this way. So uh, with X of Y, Z, with the Y values in the nilpotent subalgebra. And uh, you quotient by that. I mean, the, the gauge group acts on this class of operators, and you declare that two operators are equivalent if there is a gauge connecting these two, just this. So these are uh, meromorphic operators on P1. A couple of examples, uh, just to, to show that these operators, which are quite abstract, can be very concrete. Uh, so take g equal to SL2, and um, fix the first, the fundamental representation of SL2. So this one is the F, and this part is the Borel, and there is a gauge sending to an, an operator of this form, where you will depend on A and B, the, the differential polynomial. These two are gauge equivalents, or so are the same operator. And this one, of course, can be written as a second order operator, which is the Schrodinger, I mean, Schrodinger operator. Well, SL3, again, you take this with, I didn't bother to write the, the coefficients here, but the trace is zero. And again, you can equivalently write in this way and get a, a third order operator. And that's it. Uh, okay, so now that you know what that I explain what are these uppers. Let's go to the, to the main object. You will see this offer many times in the rest of the talk. These are quantum GKDB offers. And actually, this is for G simply laced only. Uh, for G not simply laced, uh, I will comment later on, on that, but this is the case of G simply laced. And I have to, to tell you what are these, these uh, well, a few of these things. Okay, we got this ad here, then F, the principal nilpotent, and then there are a couple of constant terms, which is, are this row check and this theta check here. So row check is sometimes called the dual value vector, 
is an element in the Cartan subalgebra, is uniquely de defined by these relations, and uh, uh, is not that important. <laughs> the point is that uh, um, before I gave you a definition of, of operas with something like f plus something, so the coefficient of f was 1, here is uh, 1 over z. Uh, the point is that there is a gauge which uh, sends this opera to f plus something, and this gauge cancels this term. Uh, the drawback is that this part will be more complicated. So I would prefer to write it in this way, so that uh, all uh, regular singularities here are first order poles. Then, so this row check is just a matter of, of, the, of the gauge. I mean, uh, this one is more interesting. Theta is the highest root, and the corresponding root is theta check. And here I have this minus theta, theta, um, theta v, actually. And uh, it is the same for every j. And, and uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is crucial for, for us. Then r and key hot, r appears here, and key hot is here. Uh, r is an element of, of the Cartan subalgebra, and k is a real parameter between 0 and 1. And these are free parameters, in a way, and also lambda, a spectral parameter. These are free parameters, and you know, um, these are n plus 2 parameters. And essentially, uh, these r correspond to the vacuum vector p, this k corresponds to the, the center charge, and the spectral parameter is a spectral parameter of the quantum model. So once you fix, you fix this r and k, you fix the representation of, a, of quantum, uh, quantum KDD, essentially. Um, so these are free. Then we will take them to be generic later, but otherwise are, are free. While these xj, which are element belonging to n plus, and these wj's, which are here, which are non-zero, pairwise distinct complex numbers. Well, these are additional uh, singularities, depending on a, an integer, arbitrary integer n. And these are required to be, have to be fixed so that the monodromy at each uh, Wj is trivial for every value of lambda. This is important I mean, to, to every value of lambda. So these are the quantum GKDB operas. Uh, okay, I should comment on this uh, data check. And this choice essentially follows from uh, Fagin and Frankel, uh, and it corresponds to the Generic, uh, generic situation. Um, the idea is that since we want to have the monodromy to be trivial at this point for every lambda, the monodromy we are considering here is not just a monodromy in the simple algebra G, but it is in the Katzmoody algebra. Um, and in this case, Fagin and Frankel showed that uh, uh, in this case, the, the generic situation is given by, by choosing uh, 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 this, uh, this, this coefficient. So uh, essentially what is involved here is a, a, a generalized Bruhat decomposition of the Katz-Moody group. Uh, and the generic choice is, uh, is, uh, is, is, is this one. So non-generic choices uh, can be obtained when uh, 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 pairs or even more uh, um, of, of these of this, uh, poles uh, uh, collides, or uh, if some of them goes to, 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 to zero. In the case they collide, then you have to change this, uh, this uh, coefficient, but this is uh, the generic situation. <coughs> a couple of words about the, the number n, which is by definition a number of additional poles, and uh, is expected to be, I mean, what it's going to be is, is the level of the representation. So n equal to zero, if you allow me to, which means that this part <laughs> is not present. So just this upper will be the ground state upper. Uh, n equal to one will correspond to the level one. And once you fix n and you uh, impose 
trivial monotony conditions here. Then you have a number of operas satisfying these trivia, trivial monodromies, and the number of operas you find uh, is expected to be the dimension of the, the level and subspace. So n equal to zero, this part is not present, just one opera, and so the ground state is one dimensional, n equal to one, and this is trivial, of course, I mean, it's just um, n equal to one, and this is not trivial, imposing trivial monotomy condition, you find n opers, n is the rank of the algebra. And this is a calculation that we, 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 we did. I mean, it's, uh, it's not obvious. So level one subspace is uh, n dimension. OK, just to <clears throat> relate this with the previous works, uh, the SL2 case was already um, covered in the literature, it was done by Bajanov, Lukian, and Zemologikov. And uh, if you write uh, the, the quantum KDV oper, which was shown before in the, in the scalar gauge, so as a second, as a Schrodinger operator, you get this operator here. And where, of course, the W satisfies zero mono, uh, trivial, sorry, trivial monotomy conditions for every lambda. Uh, these are the conditions that you find. And this is the, the oper. And it's the same operator which was shown yesterday by uh, Claire Dunning. Uh, the only point is that you might not recognize that because it is written in a different coordinate. You could change coordinate in this way. It's just you know, a number times the power of, of x. Then you get the original monster potential of uh, Bajanov, Lukianov, and then Zamologikov. And essentially, this change of coordinates is a um, it is better for us to work in, in Z rather than X because uh, the effect of this change of coordinates is to take the Stokes sector and, and put the Stokes sector in the whole Z complex plane minus uh, uh, the negative uh, uh, real axis. Mm. So this is the, the idea. Okay. Now, a few statements about this all person. Uh, this is maybe the most important slide of the, of the, of the talk. Uh, okay, define this all person with the properties uh, we again before. And uh, okay, this all person has regular singularities at zero and here, at WJs, and an irregular singularity at, at infinity. So typically you talk about generalized monotomy and the, the statement is that, that we proved is that the, the generalized monotomy data of this opera satisfy the beta and such equation for the quantum GKDB model. Second, which is a big vague statement is that the, the most general operas satisfying this, all these conditions are given by this statement. Of course, uh, I have to, to, to tell you what do I mean by most general, and I hope I will have time to, to explain this uh, at the end of, uh, of the talk. And um, a couple of words about uh, the trivial monotomy conditions. Uh, okay, this turned turn out to be uh, a system of n, the number of poles, times 1 plus nh over 2 h. Number object. So a system of algebraic equations in these equations and the same number of unknowns. So we expect the, the, the number of operas uh, satisfying this trivial monotonic condition to be to be finite. But counting the number of operas, as we saw yesterday, even in the in a, in a, in a quite simple case, can be can be tough. So uh, it is a different, difficult, uh, difficult problem. But and and the choice of this theta here is essential. If you change theta and take something else, uh, you will not get the, not the correct number of, of uh, unknowns. So it, it's a. Uh, K hat being in this interval zero to one? Is it what, what is K hat? 
uh, a number, a real number. It's a real number in the other ones, but yeah. it's not the right equation. Sort of. No, 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 that's the point. No, it's it's a it's a, any real number. Oh, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> um, this is the point. Uh, it is a meromorphic affine opera. The point is that uh, uh, <laughs> if you just consider it as a G opera, it is not meromorphic because of this. Is there a change of page to an actual meromorphic connection? Uh, Can you gauge away this uh, Z to the K? It, the gauge involves. Is, is, a, is a gauge in in um, um, in Katz Moody. Um, I, I I forgot. It involves this 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 D. In that case, you get a meromorphic one, but in in a, in a, uh, so you can write essentially you can write uh, this L as. Uh, uh, dz plus f hat plus r plus k hat d over z plus something, where d is lambda d lambda, and uh, f hat is f plus lambda. It it. So this is so it's a meromorphic affine over, but but of course we prefer to work in in, in this. Uh, this this only finite you only allow finite transformations. You only allow transformations by. Yeah, finite, finite. Fine, in, in the in the in the in the in the simple group. Yeah. Did I answer your question or or not? No. Because I, I, I you asked the question, but then I answered to to, to him. <laughs> okay. Oh, maybe I will. I will. Anyway, it is not meromorphic as, as a G-hopper. It may be written as a meromorphic, meromorphic G-hat hopper. This way, where K appears here. Now, maybe I will. So you fix the branch in log Z or something to define? Not really. No, 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 no. It's, it's a... But, mm, we might discuss about this a bit, a bit, a bit later because I will use this, this form anyway. Of, of the okay, uh, a conjecture about the expected dimension level n subspace. So the number of operas you get will uh, fix n, and the the, the con whoa from the UK. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the expected dimension is p n of n, the n color partition of, of uh, partitions of n. So, for n equals zero, if you want, you just have one. N equal one, you get n small n operas. Sorry. Sorry. For, for any Lie algebra. And, and so it's like partition and all of your run doesn't matter which which algebra it is. Yeah. Not a select. Not a select. No, no, any 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 as a simple lace Lie algebra. Uh, okay, uh, how much time do five minutes? Ten minutes, fine. Well, <laughs> Okay, now I, I, I want to tell you how to get from these operas to, to, to the beta ansatz. And the idea is the following. Fix the node by vi, v1, vn, the fundamental representations of g. I will need all of them. Okay, take the universal cover of, of uh, c minus the origin and introduce this distinguished phase of solutions. Okay. Uh, C hat is the space of, of, of uh, Z, and C is the space of lambda. You take functions with values in the ith representation, which are solutions of, of uh, this differential equation, and which are entire functions of, 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 uh, of lambda. 
okay, and denote this in this way. This is the space of solutions I will, uh, I will, uh, I will consider. And I will need a monodromy, and I will uh, a slightly different definition of monodromy due to this k, k hat here. So it is defined in this way. Of course, as usual, you go around monodromy at, at zero. You go around z in this way, but you also turn around lambda with this k hat here. And then you have, well, this is just a, a gauge which uh, it is convenient, but the, the most important thing is that you turn around also, not just around, around z, but also around, uh, around the lambda. And the idea is that uh, when you do that, okay, this term will be <coughs> invariant. Okay, and with this definition of monodromy, which by the way is, is uh, all linear, uh, um, Allomorphic functions in lambda. These are um, so. This is a, this is a, a O lambda module, which is okay. It's an infinite dimensional space, but this is a, a O lambda module, and it's a free module of rank uh, and the the, um, the rank of the algebra. And you have a discrete symmetry. So if psi belongs to this space, then with this definition of the module. Uh, you get again solution in the same in the, in the sp same space. Uh, okay, and then with this definition, I have to to work out uh, <coughs> some some analysis if you want. So I will consider. Okay, these are regular, but the monotony is trivial. While here is not is not trivial. And Z0 is a regular singularity. So I will denote P omega i, set of weights of a, the, the height fundamental representation. And then I will fix a basis of this fundamental representation. Of course, uh, these elements are conveniently labeled by weights of a, of a representation. And the statement is that for this pair, Generic, and I will not say what generic means. And if this coefficient, which is the one here, is semi simple, then you can find uh, all on the basis of eigenvectors for the monodromy. And these are going to be written in this way. It is, uh, if you want, a generalized Frobenius, uh, Frobenius uh, method. Um, and I will denote these eigenvectors by chi omega. Okay, and it's a, uh, a basis. Mm. Then, at infinity, you have an irregular singularity. Uh, and uh, to make things a bit simpler, uh, just in this slide, I will, I will uh, assume that we are in the so-called semi-classical region of parameters, and this formula will become uh, nicer, and uh, I will skip this, but the point is that uh, there exists uh, for each i a subdominant solution, uh, uh, a solution which is subdominant at infinity in the whole complex plane minus the negative uh, real axis. With this, with this behavior, r is a rational function, and so for each i you get one subdominant solution. Okay, so again, this is our Upper, and just recalling what I said in the last two slides, for each i, there is one subdominant solution with values in v i and subdominant at infinity, and a basis of eigenvectors for the monodromy uh, matrix matrix at zero. And this is a basis, so you can write psi. In, in, um, in terms of this, of, of this basis. All of these are entire functions of lambda, and so these coefficients, which I will call q omega, are entire functions. And these are the q omega that we, uh, which were shown at the beginning of the, of the talk. Okay, this is, this is good, so I have a 
n expansions, and they take values in different representations. And the point is, that, okay, fair enough, but how to, we want, how to get to the QQ system, so we, we, I want to, to have relations between these, these queues. It's not just, uh, uh, you have to satisfy the, the beta on such, essentially. So the size of the menagerie is zero, and the size of the subdominant Other way around. Okay. Other way around. <laughs> so psi yeah. subdominant is subdominant at, at infinity, and the chi are the, the, the monodromy at zero. And it's a, it's a, it's a basis. For each, for each uh, i, one, two, n, so I have n problems uh, with values in uh, the, uh, or, um, each fundamental representation. Uh, OK, the, 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 uh, the crucial point is what is called the psi system, which was actually introduced earlier by uh, Dorita Teo and Dunning. Um, but we wrote it in a, in a more generic case, a more algebraic case. If C is the Cartan matrix of G, and B is the incident, incidence matrix, matrix, then you have a, a homomorphism of representations, which is this one, and, uh, from, from which I haven't defined. <laughs> but it goes from that space to, to, to uh, the other one. It's, it's uh, quite elementary. Um, and essentially, the subdominant solutions satisfy this. This can be shown that they satisfy this this uh, system. So, you take uh, the i subdominant solution, uh, you twist it, not a whole uh, <coughs> around, but just half of it, wedge the tw the other twist, and then this is an element which lives here, and you map this element into into this, and uh, uh, the image of that element is, is a, this, this tensor product of, of solutions. And this is, is going to be an algebraic system of algebraic relation among subdominant solutions in different representations. And just to come back to Hurt, in the SL2 case, you just said that the Bronskian of the subdominant solution twisted is equal to 1. This is ge generalization of the Roskin equal to, to, to 1. So this is for us is the, 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 the main algebraic ingredient. Uh, we were able to find relations between these subdominant solutions. And from these relations, the, the functional relation for the Q will, will follow. So recall we have, now we are at the QQ system. Recall we have this expansion with these QIs. And of course, omega i always belongs to, I mean, if the i fundamental way, and all, it's a weight of the height fundamental representation. And for every sigma in, in the Weil group, the image of omega i is again a weight of the representation. So this sigma omega i is one of these qi's, and I will denote it in that way. And also, omega i minus alpha i, the i uh, simple root, again belongs to this space. So this element is one of these ones. And I will denote that by q tilde sigma. Oh, they depend on lambda, of course, both of them. Uh, and once you fix that choice, and you plug this expansion in the psi system of the previous slide, then you get this a closed system of relations for the Qs and the Q tildes, which appear here only. Where this theta is okay, just this one. And of course R and K hat appears explicitly. And uh, this is the Q Q tilde system. And, and from this from this you get the beta and such equation just Erasing the, 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 this is standard, uh, the, the, the Q tilde. Okay, last slide. Okay, this is the same system as before, just a cup it here. And there is a theorem which was proved by Frankel and the next speaker. Okay. 
which says, okay, the, the, this QQ tilde system, which uh, we brought together with David and, uh, and Daniele, okay, they, they show that it is a universal system of relations in the commutative Grotten dick ring, the category of representation of the rest of algebra with a quantum affine algebra, UQG hat. This means that uh, the QQ tilde system, which proved in the ODE side, also it's also valid in the integrable model side. Um, and this was known for uh, SL2 and SL3, but now it works for every uh, Katsumodi algebra. And if you're interested in uh, this statement, then uh, you are invited to attend the, the next talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.